Hey everyone, this is uh, another of my Avid tutorials, and this one is looking at if you're working on a project that has media coming in in different aspect ratios and different frame sizes and resolutions, and just kind of how to work with that. And I'll be honest, this isn't something that I've usually dealt with a lot. Most of the stuff that I cut is narrative stuff that was all shot on the same type of camera, and everything comes in in the same aspect ratio, and you set your project to that, and everything works great. But I'm currently cutting a documentary where we have some footage coming in from different sources, everything from different professional cameras to stuff shot on people's phones and such. So there's things that came in at different aspect ratios and different resolutions, and you want to try to work with that all in the same project, and I thought that might be useful for other people to see. So what I have here is I've brought in some clips that came in with different sort of issues in terms of how they're going to fit into the project and get formatted to make sure they look correct. There are some built-in tools within Avid to do this, and I'm gonna show you the kind of pros and cons of those. There's some things that it handles just fine, some other things that actually are kind of problematic to use the kind of built-in tool here, and you kind of have to do some workarounds. But we'll take a look at that. So first thing here, this is a clip that was just shot on my phone as a demo. I'll show you what the actual clip is supposed to look like in a moment, but what I want you to see is just kind of what Avid did by default here, and then we'll take a look at the settings and kind of show you how it got to that point. So I'm going to right click on my clip and at the very top here, go to source settings for that clip. And that's going to bring up this window. It'll usually start on color encoding, which is where we would adjust the color space. I'm going to click over to this tab that says frame flex. And this is where I can adjust how that original clip is being processed. This is before it gets into a timeline or anything like that. So anything I set here, anytime that clip is used, it'll apply these settings to it and it'll show up the same way. So if I might be using this clip multiple times, I don't want to have to put an effect on it in the timeline every time. I'd like to just have that built into the clip, and so every time I use it, it just comes in correctly. So that's what we're going to do here. What we see on the top here is what the actual footage is supposed to look like. And so Avid knows this. It says this clip is 1920 by 932 pixels, which gives it an aspect ratio of 2.06 to 1 that my Samsung phone weirdly did. And on the bottom here, you'll see how it's actually translating that into a 16.9 project. In this case, I'm working on a 16.9 project. I'm assuming that's the way that I want to finish my piece and what maybe most of my footage is in. And that's something you set when you create your project. So when you first create the project, you want to figure out what is the aspect ratio that I want to be working in here and set your project to that. And so this is a kind of default 16.9. You can set that to other things. You can even customize it. So, you know, if you're working in a vertical form for an Instagram story or something like that. You could set your project aspect ratio to, you know, maybe rotate that 90 degrees and set it to 1080 by 1920 instead. So it's a vertical frame and Avid will be fine with that and let you do it. And I'm going to say it doesn't really matter that much what my final aspect ratio is here. The point is I'm working with stuff that's in different aspect ratios and I want to kind of match it all to that. So in this case, my final one is 16.9. Okay, so you can see what it did with this picture that came in at 2.06 to 1 is it made it fill that 16.9 frame. What we're seeing on the bottom is how it's actually interpreting that. Here's the original, here's this. And you can see what it did was it just had to stretch it vertically a little bit to fill that frame. So you can still see I still have got all the elements of the image. There's nothing being cut out, but everything's just looking stretched a little bit vertically. Now in a case like this where the aspect ratio is pretty similar and I'm just looking at some cabinets in a refrigerator, it may not make a big difference. But I'd actually like it to be interpreted correctly so I don't get anything stretched. Or if someone walks into the frame, I don't want them to be oddly stretched or anything like that. So you can see here in reformat, the default thing it's doing is stretching it to fill the frame. I have a couple other options here. So one thing I could do is say center crop. And what that's going to do is it's going to keep the proportions of everything the same in here. So you can see kind of the width to height of objects within the frame is now the same. So it's interpreting that footage correctly. And what it's doing to fill that 16.9 frame is it's just cropping off a little bit of the edges. So if we look over here in the corner, you can see this line between the fridge doors and the freezer door kind of goes all the way down to this lower left corner, which would be down here, but it actually chopped off that edge. Same thing over here on the right. It's cutting off a little bit of the corner, a little bit of this right side of the range here. So you can see we've got kind of the knobs and then see the whole range over there. Whereas here, we've got the knobs and it's cutting off the far right edge of that. So that's another way to interpret this. I can try center keep size and that's going to do this weird thing where it's going to put it in the center of the frame and keep uh, the actual full size in frame, but now I've got all this black around it. And the reason for that is if you look down at the bottom, you'll see that my project is actually a UHD project. So it's 3840 by 2160 
And so what it's doing is it's keeping the actual number of pixels of my original image, which is only 1920 wide. So that's why I end up with all this black space around it because the image is actually smaller than my project resolution and it's keeping the relative sizes of those. And the other one I didn't look at is pillar box and letter box. And that actually is probably what I'd want to do in this case is say, hey, just bring that whole frame in there, put a little black around the edges of it so that I can see everything in the frame and all the proportions are correct. And it's just gonna show up as a little bit of a different aspect ratio. I'll end up with some black bars in this section if I wanna keep this whole frame. So that would be what I'd go with for something like that. Let's take a look at another example. You can see this is actually showing up kind of weird. Let's take a look at what it is. And this is something that was shot on a camera that uh, doesn't use square pixels. So this is actually meant to be a 16.9 image. And I'll be able to figure that out as I start processing it and looking at it and make sure it looks normal. But I happen to know that in this case. Um, so it's something that instead of a 1920 by 1080, it actually shot it at a 1440 by 1080. So first thing I'm going to do is tell it this is actually supposed to be a 16.9 image. And you'll notice it actually figured out immediately what this is supposed to be. It says, okay, we want to display it as a 1920 by 1080, which means these weren't square pixels, they're rectangular pixels. And that now fills the frame because it was a 16.9 image, but I just had to tell it that the pixels need to display differently in this case. If I set these to square pixels, you'll see it's going to have to figure out something else to do with it. And I'd like to point out that as I change some of these things, you'll notice other things change too. You don't have total flexibility to do whatever you want in this frame flex tool here. It's gonna put certain constraints based on what the footage is and what settings sort of go together. And honestly, it kind of figuring out what the footage is. So in this case, it doesn't really matter if I say stretch or center crop or pillar box or whatever, because once it knows how to interpret these pixels correctly, this actually fills the 16.9 frame. It was a 16.9 image, so this shows up correctly. So I'm gonna say apply that. And now every time I go into this clip, it's always gonna show up like that. I think I forgot to hit apply on this one, but it still showed up the same. And if I go back into the source settings there, you can see it remembers uh, these things that we set. So this is all correct. Okay, now I'd like to look at one that actually gives me some problems within Avid. And this is something that was shot on a phone, 16.9, except it was shot vertically instead of horizontally. And you can see by default, this is not being interpreted correctly. Uh, sometimes it might, it depends kind of what the settings were or it might interpret it what it deems correct, but it might not be the way you wanted it. So let's go into the source settings on this and take a look. So here you can see what the full image is. It's a 16.9 image, except you can see it was shot vertically, so 9 to 16. So I can start messing with this, and what I'm going to find is something like this where the image is actually rotated actually causes Avid some problems when I'm trying to fix it in the source settings frame flex. Let's try a few things. I'll say first off, okay, this is actually supposed to be 1080 by 1920. And you'll notice what it does is it just sort of squishes things weirdly and I can move out this box in terms of what I'm showing. And now I'm kind of showing the whole image except now it's stretched weird. So then I might say, okay, well, can we just unstretch that and letterbox it instead? But if you notice what it did, it actually just cropped off that extra part of the image and say, what if I center crop it? That's gonna do the same thing. What if I keep size? That's gonna do the same thing. So none of this is actually giving me my whole image correctly formatted the way I might like it to. So we're gonna try to do this and make it work and we'll see, this, this one I'll say, I sometimes have to fiddle around with a few times to get this to actually do what I want. And the reason is what's happening here is you can see it knows this image is rotated. So it's doing this rotation. The problem is when it rotates the image, it ends up cropping it. So here's my image. I set this back to 16.9, rotated, and it's cropping off part of that because you can see I can't kind of get this box around it to cover the whole frame. If I try to like drag this out, it doesn't work um, or it doesn't actually change here. But sometimes if you drag it a little bit or double click on it, you'll actually get it to work but I found it's not 100% predictable. I can do the same thing several times, and sometimes it takes me to the second or third try until it actually kind of figures out what to do and gives me what I wanted, which is this vertical orientation of the entire picture where I'm not cropping off anything on the bottom or top or left and right. I'm actually getting the whole video. And even if I set this to pillar box, letter box, which is what you would think, it doesn't work. It's trying to crop off the top and bottom here. So this type of material where it's rotating it is a little strange, like I said, I can usually get this to work, but I have to sometimes try it a few times. 
And what you really want to be able to do, it turns out, is be able to scale this size option up and just make the box bigger than your picture because I really want this red box to kind of go all the way like this. And there's just not a way to drag it and visibly do this because they've capped the size at 100. But I can usually get this to work. I'm going to hit apply and save that. You'll also notice it's not centered. And I can try messing with these things. And again, because I can't kind of get to the whole box, you can't always get it centered the way you want. So I'm not a huge fan of how this works for stuff that I need to rotate in here, but I can do it if I need to. So now I've got that. And you can see now if I use this clip, you know, and grab a piece of this and throw it into my timeline, it does show up correctly in the sequence. So it did save those settings and it's working correctly. It's just a little awkward the way that this works. So here's another one that I've already corrected and done the same thing to. Let's take a look at uh, one more of this same sort of option. And you can see this is actually usually the default what how it will bring this stuff in if it was something that was done vertically instead of horizontally. You can see it's basically kind of doing a center crop, cropping off the top and bottom of what was shot to kind of fit it into this 16.9 frame, but it still has pillar boxes. I could try double clicking on these or dragging them out and you can see it won't let me do that. And again, what I'd really like to do is just drag this box out to here. But I'm going to go through that same process I did and see if I can kind of trick it into working. So first thing I'm going to do is tell it this is actually 9 by 16 footage. And then I'm going to tell it to make the frame 16, 9 like that. So I kind of get this whole image like this. And you can see when I do that, it's going to change the pixel aspect ratio. And then I'm going to change the pixel aspect ratio back and get back to this. And then try to drag this out and eventually kind of trick it into working like that. And again, I'm kind of offset to the side here. I will admit this is a workaround. This is a setting that I really think they need to look at and fix in here, but that's a way to get it to work. I'll hit apply and now my footage is all formatted the way I want. I did this for demo purposes so you can see how to mess with this in here. Honestly, when I get stuff that's rotated, which I don't deal with this a lot, but for this documentary, I have some footage that was shot on a phone vertically and I need to rotate it to do that. I actually bring it into DaVinci Resolve where you have great rotation commands on the footage and I just rotate it, export it as a new master clip and just use that and I found that much easier. I can export it right into an MXF, throw it right into my Avid Media Files folder. I covered that in another video about dealing with Avid Media and that works out great. So I certainly have that option. But if I want to do it within Avid, this is the way to do it. And you can see I now have all my clips being interpreted correctly and ready to work with and edit. I'll show you one other option I do have here if I have some footage in this kind of rotated form, and that's to just deal with it in the timeline. If I'm gonna use this clip a whole bunch of times, I don't really wanna to have to deal with that and go put an effect on it every single time, but I do wanna show you that that ability is in there, so if you have something that's not being interpreted fully correctly, you can always just go deal with it in your timeline where you actually use that clip. So I'm gonna bring in another clip in the same rotated form. Okay, so I got a clip in here, it's actually another copy of the same one, and you can see it's doing the same kind of um, center crop thing that I don't really want it to do. And in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is just, I can tell it to do something like that and stretch it and then fix this in the timeline, or I'm going to show you the rotation option, which is just tell it not to rotate this and leave the original clip in here. And you can see as soon as I turn that rotation off and it's just interpreting this as the original footage, 16.9, except instead of vertically, this works fine. So I'll take a piece of this, throw it into my timeline. And then once I have it in here, I'm going to go to my effect palette, command three, or I have this up over here. And I'll use my old favorite, the 3D picture in picture and drag this in here, pull up my effect editor, which is under the tools menu. I just have a keyboard shortcut set for it. There's the effect editor. And then once I had this whole image in here, now I can really do anything I want with it. So I could scale it. In this case, I'm gonna rotate it on the Z axis to get it vertically the way I want, exactly 90 degrees. And then I'm gonna scale it down to fit the whole thing in. Okay, and now I've got my clip and it's exactly the way I wanted it, but I had to do that once it was in the timeline. I don't have that same exact tool available in the source settings. 
The other thing I want to mention, somebody pointed this out correctly on a previous video where I was talking about reframing, is when you use this 3D picture and picture tool, it's really zooming and playing with this data that was already here. If I had something high resolution and maybe transcoded it, or I'm working in a lower resolution sequence, you know, maybe it's UHD footage and I'm working in an HD sequence just to make it easier on my computer. This effect is just working with that data. So it's working with like the 1920 by 1080, even if this was originally UHD footage. When I'm dealing with the source settings in the frame flex tool, that's actually working with the original pixels. Now, in this case, this actually is 1920 by 1080 stuff, so I kind of have the same data no matter how I deal with it. But that is something to be aware of if you are mastering in Avid, is just keeping track of your resolutions and make sure you're not downgrading stuff as you're doing this various processing and rotations and scaling and stuff like that. If you are finishing, you know, doing your master version in Avid, then you would want to try to do stuff in the frame flex instead of doing it once it's on the timeline. But if I'm just doing my creative edit offline here, this works fine. Again, if this is the only time I'm going to use this clip, it's just as easy to kind of do that with the effect as to go into the frame flex source settings and mess with it there. But a couple options and how I can handle this. So I hope this is useful to other people who might be dealing with projects that are mixing different media that came in in different aspect ratios or pixel aspect ratios or anything like that. So that's how you go in and correct them. Thanks. Hope that was helpful. See you next time.